Um, Russ, should we tell people about the time when we were renovating the dining room and the fight we had over the lighting in our dining room? Yeah. I know. It was a big fight. It I mean, I don't mean big argument. like as in, you know, knock down, drag out. But that was probably the only thing in the dining room that we really argued about. Yeah. There was another thing that we kind of argued about, which was whether to paint the dining room floor or not. Because we have old wood floors. And the wood floors in our dining room were really bad and they're I really horrible. I wanted to sand them down and varnish them. And they're just not worth it. And so I said, nope, we're going to paint it. Because my parents did that on their in their old house. And it looks really good, doesn't it? I mean, it needs yeah, to be repainted. Yeah, it needs to be repainted. But we're now, like but... six, seven years on. And yeah, yeah. chairs have scraped and lots of furniture mm-hmm. moved. So five, six years on is not bad for floor paint. No. So uh, he did come around to that. And you did come around to the light. Yeah, I did. I came around to the lighting. And that's what we're talking about today, guys. We are here talking about lighting and yeah. lighting fixtures and all the different options that are available to you when you are, you know, looking at lighting in your home. And yeah. So Join stick around us after this. <laughs> or stick around. We'll be right back and we'll talk about all the different things that have to yeah. do with lighting and i could end that with russ you light up my life ah. Ah. yeah uh, here we go <laughs> All right. So, let's talk about there's we we kind of divided it because lighting's one of those really underrated under talked about things but it is so important in a house yeah it can have such a great impact on absolutely each room exactly when we did our electrical update because when i bought this house this house had uh fuses and and, knob and tube and some knob and tube not all knob and tube but some there was some knob and tube and fuses throughout the whole house so about Seven, eight years ago, something like that. We upgraded yeah. the entire house's electrical. Um, actually went overboard, really overboard. But it only cost us like a couple hundred bucks extra to go with a 200 amp panel. And now we have more expansion slots than anybody who owns this home will ever need yeah. in their lifetime. Mm-hmm. So we kind of eliminated that. We added that. power out to the garage. Yep. We... Um, it was a major upgrade because lots of more outlets in. right because we added a ton of outlets to the old house we ran electric out or had electric run out to the garage yeah. um just a huge huge update but one of the big things we also did at the same time was we upgraded a lot of lighting in the house mm-hmm. um, in fact what we had the electrician do was we had him put in some lights in all sorts of different areas that we didn't have lights before or that they yeah. weren't working like, like in closets, our closets yeah. yes all of our closets now on our up on our upper floor have motion activated lights yeah so you walk into the closet and the light just comes on automatically brilliant yeah kind of except for we did run into a problem because the door of the closet in our bedroom the door of the closet in our bedroom yeah that closet door if bobby walked it because it's a slotted door when bobby walks past it turns on in the middle of the night but we figured that out yeah that's not really a problem anymore but that was a little bit of a problem for a while yeah or if i stuck my leg out of bed or yeah all of a sudden there'd be a big flash of light if the door wasn't shut so yeah so we've learned to keep that door shut remember to shut it (laughs) but overall we've um we've got some great when we did our electrical upgrade we did a bunch of lighting upgrades and we're going to talk about yeah. what are some of the reasons so let's first of all let's talk about the three the not the three there are five different types of lighting or purposes there i is. guess is a really yeah. good way to say it so what would you like to what do you want to start into it so yeah so obviously general lighting is like the basic foundation of a lighting scheme um it's most of your lights in your living room so that you can see the whole area when it illuminates it will light up you know your living room dining room area kitchen you find them in bathrooms in bedrooms you find general lighting is used in almost every room as far as um as far as the lighting goes because it is general that's what that very yeah. word means but it comes in different styles and we're going to talk about the styles yeah, it comes later in different on. styles yeah and also you might also have a secondary system of lighting right like up lighters or wait 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 we haven't gotten to that yet okay okay so the second type of lighting is what's referred to as ambient lights 
ambient and ambient just kind of adds like that atmosphere and sometimes it's really kind of like you said it's a secondary to the general lighting mm -hmm. so you might have ambient light um in a dining room especially yeah. because you might have sconces on the walls that you use for a formal dinner but maybe you just have a regular chandelier that you use for you know general eating yeah. for the family when they're um when they're there so um so ambient lighting when you want to see what you're eating, use the ambient light. <laughs> no, use no, the no. General light. Use the general the lighting. When you're just having something <laughs> romantic, you have ambient lighting, which is basically yeah. ambient is the idea of mood lighting. It's actually the same thing as mood lighting, basically. Yeah, it is you know so, a dimmer switch or saying. Or, yes, exactly, exactly. So there's really only four types. Yeah. Um. So then you have task lighting. So task lighting is what is used primarily. If you want, if you're doing a particular task or a particular thing. So, for example, pantries will oftentimes have task lighting with lights shine directly on particular parts. If you yeah. have um, portraits or photos in a room, yeah. you might have lights that are tasked just with lighting up that portrait or that piece of art on a wall. Um, or even that shelf or whatever it is that you're trying to display. So, um, task lighting is... Usually a light, it is like a one single light or a multiple set of yeah, lights. Yeah, most directed people have them something. in their bedrooms as a side lamp. Yes. To, it's like a side reading. table lamp. Yeah, that's yeah. like a reading lamp is a great, yeah, you're absolutely right. A reading lamp or a reading light is what. <laughs> so, so yeah, you're absolutely right. A reading light on the side of the bed um, would be task lighting. But you also will find task lighting oftentimes in garages or in hobby spaces. Like if somebody has a a she shed or a man cave and they want task lighting for a particular thing. Yeah. Um, like if they do a particular hobby like painting or something. Yeah, if they're doing artwork or something like that or even, you know, um, to identify any course of work. I use them a lot for my fly tying. Right. Because I want to light up what I'm doing so I can see it clearly. Yeah, absolutely. Or other task lighting would be something like this. Okay, Google. Studio light on. Like that. That is task lighting. Because yes. when we're supposed to be doing this task of this, we're supposed to have the studio light on. We are. Because we already have general light. And it's probably a good idea that I turn that I on. I was pointing at it earlier. Oh, is that what you were pointing <laughs> yes. at? Oh, well, you should have just stopped I and said. I didn't want to shout out. Why? You can always clip that out. <laughs> Okay, so task lighting can be something like turning on the studio light that we just yes. did as well. And um, and then, of course, there's the last type, which is accent lighting. Yep. And you see that a lot when you have things like rope lights um, around bedrooms. And like, especially like teenagers will do like rope lights around their, you know, the they'll rim the, their bedroom at the top yeah. with rope lights. It's to highlight particular features. In sure. Our room. You see accent lighting in china cabinets where you have lights mm -hmm. that are lighting up the china or the beautiful, yeah. the collectibles. You see accent lighting in kitchens as well with up lights and down lights. As well in bedrooms when you have the tray ceilings. Yes. Uh, sometimes you have you accent have lighting on a tray ceiling. Right yes, there. absolutely. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times be in kitchens, you see them on the tops of cabinets or you don't see them. They're hidden on the yeah. tops of cabinets sometimes behind trim mm -hmm. but they're shooting up to the ceiling and giving you that ambient or accent lighting it's like yeah. a it is kind of a mood thing but it is more of an accent lighting just to kind of mm -hmm. highlight the ceiling height or the trim work or whatever it is that it's yeah. accenting and setting off so we've got those four different types which are general ambient task lighting and accent lighting Yep. Okay. So that's great. So we have four different types. And now let's talk about the different styles because here's where it gets cool. And here's where our story comes in. So we were yeah. looking for our dining room. We were looking at various chandeliers. Now, chandeliers are a type of light. It's a style of light. And of course, a chandelier is like where it comes down from the ceiling and then it, it usually like swoops up or around. Now, some of the modern mm -hmm. chandeliers actually kind of just have like lots of things poking off of them yeah or a Ooh, swirl or something shapes there's some amazing designs out there absolutely you need chandeliers. to google chandelier and just see the various ranges of things yeah. you can do but yeah. you and i 
had a very different set of opinions on the chandelier. And I found one that I thought was gorgeous. I love it the was. brush. It looked really nice. I love the brushed nickel. I love the frosted mm -hmm. glass globes because they're just really easy to keep clean and they hide things. And I just thought it was just the most beautiful. It like swooped up and it had these beautiful glass globes that moved, that pointed upward and they just look so nice. They Why did, did I lose? Nice. Why did I lose? Why did I not because get my chandelier? I'm fed up with when you have the upturned glass bowls for the lighting, they invariably get insects in them. Well, and that's because, of course, insects are attracted to light. Yes. So when insects are in a house, when you have a fly in the house or you have some a mosquito or anything, any flying bug, and let's be real, even if your house is clean, you still get bugs in your house. Yeah. Um, and also dust settles in them. Yeah. So you were right on that. Yeah. So I gave in. So and now we, we got have the same type of chandelier, uh -huh. but with downturned bugs. But the globes are downturned. <laughs> so they don't collect dust. No. Well, they do a little bit on the top, on the but that's tubs, easy but to we, get clean. That's clean. easy to clean off. Yeah. Yeah. So we no longer have. So I thought I did have to, I have to say. You were right, mm -hmm. because that made a lot of sense. It's a lot less cleaning yes. for our chandelier. I just have to dust it, like, probably once a year, actually, because we don't use our dining room a and lot. we wash them when we do spring cleaning, but that's about... Yeah, you know, they stay take the globes off good. and run them through. Yeah. And actually, our globes can run through the dishwasher because yeah. they're glass, and I love that. It is awesome. If you can get glass globes for your chandelier, just a quick, you know, quick tip, you can actually take them off and run them through the dishwasher because they're glass... As long as they're not super cleans fragile, them up amazing. cleans them up really beautifully yeah. and so fast. And it actually does a better job than I can ever do, even by scrubbing. Uh -huh. So anyway, so chandeliers, that's one type. Yeah. Um, another type is sconces on the walls. Now, yeah. there's not a lot of sconces left, but you'll still see them sometimes in hallways or like entrance ways. You'll see a sconce maybe flanking a closet or something like that or flanking an entrance. You see them more outside now than inside. Yeah, yeah. Flanking We've got the some entrance on of the our house. back door. Yeah, we have two that flank our back door. Uh-huh. Um, that after the electrical upgrade, we got those installed as well. So we have we have a sliding glass door and we have two on the back of the house that match mm -hmm. up, which is really nice. Lights um, up the area when we put the dog out. In yeah. Nighttime. Or even when we're just sitting out in the, in the garden, yeah. it gives a little bit more light to the garden mm -hmm. in general. Um, so we've got sconces, but most sconces now are outside, but you'll still see them inside in the really old homes. Um, and you'll see in some of the really old homes, the old ones that used to be gas. Oh, having yeah, been yeah. converted to electric, it's really cool when people just convert them and still keep the old, old fixture. Keep the old fixture, It's yeah. very cool to see that. So you've got sconces, you've got chandeliers. Of course, there's table and floor lamps, which you mostly see um, table lamps in a living room, sometimes at a bedside table, like, you know, the reading yeah, lights yeah. that we were talking about. So you have that table light. Um, floor lamps are very common in living rooms, especially in the corners yes. um, of living rooms, um, especially if the living room does not have... Any kind of general, general lighting. Light, yeah. And there are a lot of living rooms that don't have general lighting because they weren't the style up until about the 80s, really. Yeah. Um, you just didn't have general lighting very often in living rooms. It was always assumed you were going to have. And that's why when you come into some of the older, I don't want to say older like as in they're really old, but like a 1970s or earlier home, you will find that a lot of those and bedrooms. Yeah don't have lights on the ceiling and they have a switch on the wall that open that operates an electrical outlet yeah. because the idea was and there'll would, be a hook on the ceiling or or they would just have it as a table lamp yeah and basically it would be a, a bedside table lamp and they'd flip on the switch as they came in to turn on the lamp yeah there so yeah so anyway um so that's the table and and floor lamps of course then you've got the pot lights or recessed lighting um, which you see now in most modern family rooms, and yeah. you see them a lot also of basements as well. You see the pot yeah, especially the that. especially the family rooms in the basements. Yeah, yeah. But you'll see them now as well in um, living rooms. Mm -hmm. Like I said, from like the eighties, the nineties. In the nineties, they pretty much became standard in building that you would see recessed lighting as the lighting of choice for living rooms and family rooms. Um, I think because people didn't necessarily like having. A big fixture. Wall lamps or 
you know, table lamps because then you've got to have a table there as well. True. It gives you more space. Yeah. If you can take away that fixture altogether yep. and the floor lamps and put recess lighting in the ceiling. Yeah, absolutely. So I think that's one of the reasons why. And, and also recess lighting became safer over time. Mm -hmm. the, the more electricity evolved, um, then they were able to create, you know, safer um, uh, fixtures fixtures that were yeah. more stable and and were fine they didn't overheat and then you could recess them into walls and into ceilings uh ceilings being the mm -hmm. primary place they get recessed but they sometimes are recessed into walls as well oh yeah so and on um, stairs into into the risers on stairs yes Some exactly people put mm-hmm mm-hmm Absolutely. Lights. Then you've got flush mounted. Well, flush mounted is what most people have in their bedrooms um, nowadays, which is just basically a flush mounted light means it's just flush up against the ceiling. Yeah. Like it actually touches the ceiling and covers part of the ceiling. In fact, in our bedrooms, um, we had some of them flush mounted purely because of the fact that it covered. We had some flaws up there when they had to open up the new holes because we have plaster. We got round flush mounted because that meant mm -hmm. we didn't have to redo the ceiling because they yeah. had to cut a bigger hole for the new electric mm -hmm. and everything so and we, in our bathroom we have that and we well. have that in our bathroom as well because in a bathroom you don't really want a chandelier you don't want something hanging down no. that you can bump into or things like that now there are people who do chandeliers over tubs sometimes just as a effect and a mood thing mm -hmm. but that's generally if you have a tub and a shower separate so um, flush mounts are very popular in bathrooms. Uh, pendant lights. Pendant lights you have mostly in kitchens. Um, yeah. Sometimes bar areas. Kitchens or din dining areas. Yep. Right? Dining areas, you kitchens. Particularly have them over a breakfast bar. Yes. So when, you know, people are sitting down to eat, you have those pendants mm -hmm. coming down. Technically speaking, um, if you have a light that's hanging on your front porch from a chain that's coming down, that's probably technically a pendant light. Yeah. Although... We don't really think of them as those, but they technically are because of the way, I mean, they do have the construction of a pendant light. They just don't, yeah. most of us think of a pendant light as a very long, thin, either piece of metal mm -hmm. or, um, you know, cord that is a, a yeah. you know, durable cord. But the ones that are on chains outside, yeah, those are pendant lights as well. Because I said, we don't have any pendant lights. And Russ goes, yes, we do. <laughs> and he pointed out our front porch has a pendant light, yes. which I don't like. I like the style of it, but... I want to get rid yeah. of it. We need a flush mount on our... Flush mount would work much better on our particular front porch. It would. But we do have that. Strip lights. So strip lights are usually what you would find in garages or basements. These are like those fluorescent tubes. They're not as much in style now. Um, but you can still get them. And they're very yeah. they're very handy in work areas. Um, to A workroom in the basement. Yeah, they are. But we went... A different route because we've we got did. strip lights. Well, not strip lights, but they're not. It's not. I, I. They're not called strip lights. That's a strip. Oh, I guess it is a strip light. It's an LED strip. Yes. Huh. I didn't think about that. Hold on. I'll show you what he's talking about, folks. Because I've got one behind us here. It essentially is a tube light. Yeah. It is encased. It's its own tube. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's basically. Yeah, that's like accent lighting on the floor behind me that I rarely use, but it's here if I want it. We have them on the walls. I have them in my studio that's downstairs. That's true. You have them in your studio a lot downstairs. Yeah. Um, and I have one on the wall here with for extra light. When, when we have a really dull day and I need to balance the light mm -hmm. in here, we do have one on that wall as well. Yeah. Okay, so that's fair enough. We do have a strip light. I apologize. Yeah. Again, you are right, and I was wrong. That doesn't happen very often. It's it happened a lot today. No. That's really, really disconcerting. What's going on? I don't know. The it world is turned upside down. Man in black. Thing. It must be. Yes, it's the. <laughs> we did notice that just as we started to tape, we went. Wait a second. Yeah. We're both in black today. Yeah. How did this happen? And he said, "Yes, it's man's in black. Yeah, not men." I must have had my uh, pen. And you had your your light pen. So you your forget light everything. Yeah. Your light pen to <laughs> reset. That's not a pen. That's not a light you can get. <laughs> All right. So the other type of or style of light, and a lot of people have done this and use this, but it has a kind of a bad name. Is track lighting. So a lot of people think of track lighting from the '80s, where it was a really simple white ugly track, and you could slide things on, but nowadays track lighting can be actually really sexy yeah it can be like now they've gotten to where they have tracks that curve oh yeah 
and what's what you pop up into them is just round and so it doesn't matter it can go on a curve and it it's like so yeah. cool and that allows you to target many different areas in a, in room. a single space yes so you could yeah, they're perfect in a kitchen for instance where you might want one aimed at the sink, one aimed at the cooker, one aimed at your the stores. countertop, yeah, yeah, and the countertop. So mm -hmm. when you're using your kitchen aid or any of your utilities, you've got a light aimed right at that item, so or right at that area. Anyway, yeah. yeah, absolutely. And we have a track light in our kitchen, yeah, but it is do. one of those sexy ones. Now it's technically called a track light, although you can't pull the track pieces out of this one, but yeah. it is still, it's uh, the box said it was, they called it a track light. Uh -huh. um, but there are ones that are like on curves and sometimes they're even like in circles. Yeah. And it's just really cool. And you can, the cool thing about track lighting is that you can buy however long the strip needs to be and you can put as many lights up in there within reason. Yeah. You can put, I mean, they're always rated for X amount of lights, but a lot of them you can put up to eight or nine different lights if that's what uh -huh. you want to cover and you want to have that many, so to speak, spotlights in whatever area you're doing. Yeah. So they can be really cool, really sexy, and quite pretty nowadays. So definitely check out newer track lighting. It is surprisingly really, really nice. But, you know, I think the other thing that people don't always talk about is... um so you've got the styles. Everybody knows, oh, I mm -hmm. want a pretty light fixture. I want this. I want that. But it's just as important to pay attention to... Your light bulbs. Yeah. What type of light bulbs, what type of lighting do you want? Yeah. Because your ambient, your mood, your the purpose, you want that to be pretty, you know, that, that, can, that can change. So, for yeah. example, um, we have... LED lights in our dining room and that chandelier is an LED uh -huh. light and we have it on a dimmer switch. Yes. And love that, although we don't use it very much, it is nice to know that in the dining room you can like be on a dimmer, uh -huh. you can have those nice mood romantic looking chandelier yeah. or you can put it all the way, crank it all the way up to full, um, full it. But there are some that you can't. Yeah, there's certain light bulbs that you can't use a dimmer switch on mm -hmm. yep so we've got different types of light bulbs let's talk about them so you've got first of all the incandescent light bulb which yep. is the very box standard it's what everybody's had for yeah decades. where you see the element between two wires and yeah that's what glows. practically what edison created was the incandescent yeah. light bulb so uh -huh. um or a very old-fashioned version of it but that's basically what he created and so or what he invented so we're and they're very, very familiar. good that you know people have used them for years sure 150 years ago um, they were very good yeah when you first invented them they're cheap to buy but they're very inefficient yes very overall so, and they only last around a thousand hours hours yeah no i know you think that's a lot of hours still and it is yep well, then you've got halogens, though, because halogens yeah. are a more modern version of light bulbs, and they really added a lot more light. Plus, they did add um, some efficiency. They were definitely better than, than incandescent. Better than incandescent, yeah. Mm -hmm. They last about twice as long as well. But the problem I always had with halogens, especially when I was younger, when halogens first came out when I was like in my late teens, early 20s, and mm -hmm. you know, moving into your own apartment and stuff like that, and when you go to the store and you want to buy, um, and you need to buy replacement light bulbs, and you could buy a halogen light bulb or a regular because mm -hmm. your socket will take either type because the fitting on the bottom is the same. Um, the problem is halogen light bulbs are like two to three times the price of an incandescent. Yeah, yeah. they're much dearer. And they do last two to three times longer. they're only moderately efficient. Right, they're and they and they last two to three times longer, but... That's really, you're not, there's no savings. No. Because if they only last two to three times, it, the only savings you're getting is on not having to change light bulbs as often. Mm -hmm. But you're not actually saving any money because they're only moderately efficient. Whereas even um, incandescents are very efficient. Very inefficient. Oh, very inefficient. Sorry. Yes. So they are, they're not. They're, in they are more efficient than the so, incandescent. So the halogens don't use. moderately. Yeah, but only moderately so. 
okay? And then you've got fluorescents. Well, fluorescent lights are great, except for, I don't know about you, but I struggle with um, fluorescent lights being too much light for me. Yeah. And you can't use a dimmer on those. Right. And you can't use so a dimmer. So you cannot dim these ones. Um, average lifespan, 15,000 to 30,000 hours. So you're getting much longer life on these. Yeah, because it's about four to five times the price of an incandescent. Yeah. But... No, it's even dearer than that. Well, no, it says on our Up thing here, it says... Yeah, but it depends on that. Would be This would yeah. be a higher price, too, if it was mm -hmm. a bigger size. But at the lower end, it's seven bucks versus a dollar fifty for an yeah. incandescent to a fluorescent. However... The lifespan is more than seven, is more than like five or six times the price. Yeah, so you get, worth it. You get 15, you get 15, usually at the low end times, of fluorescence, yeah. you get 15 times the um, the lifespan. So yeah. that is, you're paying five times more, but getting 15 times more lifespan. So yeah. that's a good side of fluorescence, uh -huh. which is why people still use them in work areas and workshops yeah. and garages and things of that nature, because they are very efficient. They have very good, or they're moderately efficient, but they have very good light and they last a long time. Yeah. However, Regular fluorescent lights require a separate ballast in the lighting fixture. So when that ballast goes in the lighting fi it doesn't it doesn't come in the tube itself. No. It's in the lighting fixture. So when the ballast goes in the lighting fixture, you, you have, have to, to change, change the change whole well. thing. So you can get a new ballast. And to be honest, uh, sometimes the bulbs you can, but the price of a ballast is about yeah. the same as the price of a new light. So you exactly, might as well just yeah. change out so the whole light. You might as well change out the whole thing. Right, exactly. Yeah. And some of them only la some of those ballasts only last as long as the life of the bulb. So mm -hmm. it's yeah. it's like, well, but now I'm having to buy a whole new light fixture. Well, this is where CFLs come in. Yeah, CFLs is compact uh, fluorescent lamp. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they're more efficient than, than regular anything before. Yep. They last for 20,000 hours, mm -hmm. so good so a little more than on a them. little more than a traditional fluorescent. But they only cost the same as a incandescent. Yeah, and they have the ballast inside of them. Built in. Built in. Yeah. So you don't have to get a whole new light fixture no, when they go. Just change the bulb. You're just changing out that bulb. The, the only downside, though, to both fluorescent and compact fluorescent mm -hmm. is that they do contain mercury, which do. does emit over time. Yes, and it does have a, it does have effects on health. Um, yeah, it has mercury vapor inside. Correct, so. it has mercury vapor if inside. If you smash one, that's loose, you know. Yeah, but it's not just it also emits it over time, uh -huh. so that can be something you want to pay attention to. You don't yeah. want to get mercury poisoning. Mm -hmm. um, but again, when you're in a garage and it's a well ventilated area or something like that, it's really not as yeah. Um, it's not as important, but you wouldn't want to put. Um, compact fluorescent lights into a kid's bedroom where they're going to be spending a lot of time. Mm, no. Because then that would be eking out mercury over a long period of time. However, here's the best one we have on the market now. The best one, yeah, is the LED light. Which, of course, most people are familiar with LED yeah. lights. There's, you know... Well, you're first getting... of all, they're extremely efficient. Yes. They're the Very. most efficient out of all the light bulbs. Yes. Their average lifespan is 20, 25,000 hours. So even more than the compact fluorescent. Yeah. The compact fluorescent. They're only that. double the price of a CFL, which is like three bucks for a bulb. Right. Which is amazing. But the other really, really, really good part about these is they don't get hot. Exactly. So they're safe so around kids. So when you want to change a light bulb, mm -hmm. has anybody ever had to change a light bulb and it's red hot? You need to get a tea towel to undo it before putting the next one in. Yeah. Yeah. With an LED, it doesn't. Which also makes them safer for children's yeah. bedrooms and lamps and things in kids' bedrooms. Because, okay, yes, if the kid breaks it, that's a problem. But it doesn't have mercury emitting from no. it. It doesn't get hot so a kid can't reach up to, you know, turn it off and burn themselves accidentally. Mm -hmm. um, and it gives them good light. And, and LEDs can be dimmable. 
Yes. LEDs are also dimmable. So they are extremely efficient. They last the longest. They're not the cheapest, no. but they're still way down on the bottom as far as cost goes. Yeah. So if you compare them to an incandescent, an incandescent costs about half the price of an LED. However, it's very inefficient and it only lasts about a thousand hours, whereas an LED lasts 25,000 hours. Yeah. So that right there from top to bottom is where you really get that. So you're paying yeah. 25 twice the times the life. So you're getting, you're paying twice the price for 25 times that. Yeah. And of course you have the safety factor for kids. Yeah. Which is awesome and amazing. Yeah. So, and they, you can even get ones that are different colors and everything. Yeah, exactly. You know? So, yeah. So They're if fantastic. you didn't know this much about lights, or maybe you never wanted to know this much about lights and lighting, because there's far too many choices, the reality is this can be a lot of fun. When you're looking to upgrade the lighting in your home, you yeah. know that you have a vast variety of styles you can choose from, but you do want it to fit the purpose. So pendant lights do not make sense in the center of a bedroom. No. They don't make sense in the center of a living room unless you have very tall ceilings. But they are absolutely gorgeous if you want to hang them over bedside tables. Mm -hmm. um, but just keep in mind, when you're doing some of those specialty lightings, those lights stay with the house. So, yeah, and they are very um, appropriate. You want to make sure you're matching your lighting to your house style as well. So some of the lights that we've chosen, our house was built in 1901 or 1902. There's some dispute on when that was, but... There are certain lights that just would look really weird in our house. Yeah. They wouldn't look appropriate. But we try to match the, the type of house we have to the style of the lights. And you want to do the same for you. Make sure that you're choosing the lights that you want to have and the types of bulbs that you want to have. So it's about, and then the purpose. Make sure that you know what purposes that you need in that room before yeah. you put in your lighting. When you're making a lighting plan for a room, when you're about to redo your room and you go, you know what? We're going to do some new lights as well. Put it into a plan. Yeah. Think it through. Don't just willy-nilly say, okay, we're just going to replace what we have. No, think it through. What don't you like about what you yeah, have right now? Yeah, it's a now? real good chance to change up the ambience in your room. Yeah. Just through lighting. Yeah. And to be honest, you might want to think about if you're going to put a chandelier in your dining room, think about having downturn globes instead of upturn globes. Because ladies, I have to say, he has saved me a ton of cleaning time just by him figuring that part out. And going, yeah, I hadn't really thought about that before. Mm -hmm. So anyway, but hopefully you've gotten some enjoyment from this. And if you do, or if there's anything you have to say about lighting or even about some of our other videos, but you want to make a comment on this one, that's fine. So do us a favor, put a, um, do a like comment, subscribe, turn on that notification bell if you got any value out of this. And that way you'll make sure and see our next video, which is coming up next week. Yes. And then we've got, and then Russ is going to be out of town, but we're going to actually pre-tape some so that we're ahead yep. to make sure that you guys still have it, even though Russ is going to be out of town and we so won't be able to do it that week. Next week's one is Dutch Colonial. Ooh, next week is Dutch Colonial Home. Yes. So it's an architecture one next week. Yeah. I love the architecture ones. Those are fun. So for me, they're fun anyway, because I'm, one of the reasons I'm in real estate is because I love architecture. Yeah, It's one too. of my, it's one of our loves for sure. Mm -hmm. So next week is Dutch Colonial, which we are yeah. flanked. Our house is actually flanked by two Dutch Colonials. Yes. Either side of our house has, is a Dutch Colonial. So, um, and they come in all different price points. So that's what's really cool they about certainly them. certainly do. Yeah. So join us again next week and hope to see you then. But bye for now. Bye. Okay, and you no. light up mine. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> like uh, a bolt of lightning. Yeah, that's more <laughs> like it. <laughs> it's more like crack. <laughs> yeah. These will make really good bloopers for the end. <laughs> okay, Google. Studio, Studio light, light on. on. Hold on. Oh, you called it spare bed or bed? No, light. stop talking. Okay, Google, studio light on.
Let me check something because I thought it actually said yes. Yes, Pedro. All right, let's try that again. <laughs> 